we have an update on the DOJ's antitrust suit with Google. Looks like they're going for the breakup, as Chama predicted. You remember the Bloomberg report back in August. We covered it in episode 192. Google is found liable for maintaining a monopoly in search and digital ads. Now the DOJ is working on the remedy, right? Okay, they're guilty. So now comes time for the remedy. And the DOJ is, quote, this is from Bloomberg, considering asking a federal judge to force Google to sell off parts of its business. And according to this filing, the DOJ is specifically considering structural remedies that would prevent Google from using products such as Chrome, Google Play, that's the app store on Android, and Android itself, to advantage Google Search. 32-page document released by the DOJ lays out several options, and uh, we'll go through them and talk about them here. The obvious one, terminating Google's exclusive agreements with hardware companies like Apple, they're the default search engine there for 30 or 40 billion a year, Samsung, that's a layup. Uh, separating Chrome and Android, my God, that would be drastic, ripping that out of the Google ecosystem prohibiting certain kinds of data tracking, that's a layup as well, or other behavioral and structural changes for the company. I'm going to pause there, Friedberg, and get your thoughts on this as a former Googler, and you interviewed Sergey at the summit, but I don't think we talked to Sergey about this because obviously he would not be able to talk about it. So what are your thoughts here on a potential remedy? I think we've talked about this. I, I mean, look, I've shared in the past my belief that companies that are big that have excess capital that then invest that excess capital in R&D can be a net benefit for all of us. Look at Bell Labs. Bell Labs had a monopoly on through their association with AT&T with developing radar, microwave, the transistor, integrated circuitry, information theory, everything that is the basis of the internet, computing, even nuclear technology and so on. It's because they had this extraordinary capital flow from the scale of the business and they were able to invest in R&D. Similarly, Google acquired and invested for many, many years in DeepMind. And we just talked about how Demis and team won the, uh, uh, the Nobel Prize for the work that they did. And they, by the way, published the protein structure for 200 million proteins for free out of that service. I just want to zoom out for a minute and talk about the fact that this isn't about you know, whether Google has a monopoly in search that prohibits competition or in ads that prohibits competition, but are, do, is it really worth penalizing any company that's big? Particularly, do we lose the benefit of those big companies investing in technology that pushes us forward? Google also invested in Waymo for years and years and years, which arguably spurned and drove investment from many other companies in self-driving technology. And if Google hadn't done that, would self-driving have taken off the way it did? I don't know. Same with Kitty Hawk and Larry's investment in eVTOLs, and that, that spawned a lot of eVTOL investing. And similarly, if you think about Amazon and their investment in AWS, where they were burning cash for many years, that turned out to spawn, arguably, a lot of uh, interest and investment in cloud. And so I, I don't think that these big companies are bad just because they're big. I think we should take apart the monopolistic antitrust actions and behaviors that they take and then identify ways to remedy those behaviors versus just saying anyone or anything that's big should be taken apart because there is a tremendous benefit to be gained from the R&D dollars that they all put into things that, you know, move the whole industry forward. And I think that leadership is important and needed. Otherwise, if you've got a bunch of startups that are trying to get $10 million checks from VCs, I'm not sure they're going to build a Waymo and I'm not sure they're going to build uh, Amazon Cloud and I'm not sure they're going to build a DeepMind, you know, protein folding company and publish it for free. So I don't know. That's just my point of view. On, Chamath, what's the uh, like, likely how outcome? We think, just how we should think about this stuff. Chamath, you kind of nailed this one. Pretty good with these predictions. Tell us, we'll be sitting here five years from now, what will have occurred? Unfortunately, not what Freeberg just said. It'll be the opposite. There'll be some form of forced remedy. I'm sympathetic to Freeberg's argument. I don't think that it's really a good thing in the end, because I do think there are some incredible examples of Google specifically reinvesting in a way that's really added value in the world. Mm. I think the problem though is that the technology innovation cycle has gotten too elongated. So you're not seeing creative destruction be the natural force that keeps all of these companies 
in their own swim lanes. And so they are allowed to become too amorphous and too profitable. And I think it becomes an obvious target for politicians. I think that's a really good observation there about the timeline of this, because if you look at this, I have started now, and I know many people are starting their search journey on Claude and ChatGPT every day. I'm doing 30, 40, 50 queries and follow-ups per day. I force my entire team to do that as well. And so just as there's an actual viable competitor to Google, this action has reached, I don't know, the halfway mark. This is going to wind up being completely meaningless, Sachs, if ChatGPT does build a viable competitor coexister that siphons off search. Am I wrong here? Well, it is ironic that frequently the government takes actions on these monopolies at precisely the moment they're subject to the greatest disruption. <laughs> totally. The same thing happened with Microsoft in a way, but it totally. was still a good thing that the government acted when it did because there was a risk of Microsoft porting over its desktop monopoly into this new era of the internet. I think it's still a good thing to be looking at breaking up Google. I actually think that would be good. At the end of the day, it might even be good for shareholders. This thing should be probably three separate companies like we've talked about in a previous show. But it is true that Google is facing the most existential threat to its search monopoly, and it is a monopoly, in the form of open AI at this point in time. I have one final thought here, a piece of advice for Sergey and the team over there, and I, and I told Sergey directly. They have to get good at making apps. To go use ChatGPT, you take out the app and it's a wonderful, beautiful experience. When you go try to figure out how to use Gemini, it's like shoehorned into search results and then it's like some subdomain. That's why people aren't using it. Go buy the domain name chat.com and make mm -hmm. a dedicated app just for Gemini and You're 100% make it right. kick ass. You're 100% right. Google, you right. We, suck at apps. We said this when, when you asked about the bear case of open AI. If the DOJ is going to go after Google, and by the way, the interesting thing, Jason, and I mentioned this to you, is that in the same article that floated the trial balloon about this remedy of a Google breakup, the headline in the Wall Street Journal, which I think was very purposeful, said Google and Meta. Mm. So I think that they, if given their druthers, they being the powers that be at Washington, will probably want to take a run at both of these companies. They'll start with the one that they think they can disassemble the quickest, and then they'll go to Meta afterwards. My strong advice to Meta and Google is if this is going to happen, you got to go out kicking and punching and fighting and scratching. And I think the most obvious thing is what you just said, Jason, which is you are the front door through the internet. And there is this completely new emergent technology. And where is the same response to chat GPT that you had to X or that you had to Snapchat or that you had to TikTok? Because if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And then you might as well just go for it. Yeah. Build the apps, make them kick ass, make the chat GPT alternative and get it to billions of people yesterday. Mm. That would be the most logical game theory thing to do to build up a pool of users that you will rely on when the DOJ tries to come with some consent decree or whatnot. So this is the time to build up the assets now as aggressively right. as possible. Yeah. And uh, selling YouTube would be the ultimate. I know that the ad networks you've pointed out, Freeberg, are connected. But if they distributed... If they spawn I'll give, out, you, I'll give YouTube, you something about the ad thing. Can you imagine $500 billion going into Google's coffers in YouTube shares? Well, they would have $500 billion in cash, Chama. I, had a, I talked to a company, he, uh, the CEO of a, of a public consumer-facing company, and this was in the context of some 80, 90 stuff. And he said that he and, and two other CEOs the three of them, you guys would all know, these are very big companies, the three of them combined are particularly large. And they said they've had multi-year roadmaps to try to build a reasonable set of tools in advertising and it's been impossible. And partly why is that the, the tools that the big folks offer are so good 
that they just cannibalize and run over the entire market. And so what they hear from CMOs is we would love to advertise on your company, your site, but A, your tools are substandard, and B, even though your inventory is cheaper, you just don't give us the same scale and breadth that we get in these other big places. I'm yeah. not saying that that's either right or wrong, but through the lens of probably what the DOJ sees is when a lot of these folks write letters to them talking about what they're going through, this is what they're saying. And I suspect that if you could actually have a more fragmented market in some of these key markets, it's going to be a little bit easier for these smaller companies to have a business. Yeah. Now, you could say, well, tough luck, you tried and you couldn't build it. I get that argument. And I, th and I think that, that at some point that is legitimate. But the problem is, if you're public and you're trying to make your company profitable, what do your engineers want to work on? They want to work on consumer facing forward features. And so what right. always falls off the list, it's the stuff at the end. The ad tech, yeah. And so anyways, it's this recursive negative loop that a lot of these other companies are in, in mm -hmm. the shadow of these big companies that I think is going to cause the DOJ to try to do something.